Hello. I'm going to talk to you about fountain pens with Fude nibs. And so we won't be talking about the pens so much as just the nibs. And for the those of you who aren't familiar even with the term nib, here's a pen and the nib is the metal tip on the end. So you can see a difference between a standard nib and a Fude nib. A Fude nib, as you can see, curves upward. Here's another um, example. There's another pen there. Uh, it curves upward, and here's another standard fountain pen nib there. So yeah, normally they're just straight on, and yes, this one curves upward. And the advantage to that, the thing that makes them special and different, is that they vary line thickness and they can create a lot of expression. Now they're used for Chinese calligraphy and Japanese calligraphy, I believe also, and which I do live in Taiwan now and I have a Chinese name, but I'm not going to write it because I would make it horrible. So I'll show you how the line thickness works. Okay, a standard fountain pen nib, so here's like a regular fountain pen, this is a platinum preppy or plissy or rather, and uh, so anyway you hold it down, up, still the same line thickness because it's just a standard tip, but these, if you hold them straight up, you get thin lines, and the more you angle it downward, the thicker your line gets until it can get quite thick. And so you can even take the nib and turn it around like that and you get the finest line of them. So here's one that has a lot of a lot more variation than that. Here this nib you see here. And you hold it upright vertically and you get a thin line. You, you turn it around, you get a line as thin or even thinner perhaps. And then back to how it is normally oriented. You angle it down, so here's about so here's 90, 90 degrees, 80 degrees, maybe 70. When you get to about 45, when you have that flat part right against the paper, you see that it gets really thick. And these are, this came with the pen, so it's about a number five. This one is definitely a number five nib. Is the, Number five is the size of the size of the nib. Um, a number six nib is larger compared to them. Yeah, so this is, these are both Jinhao nibs that I, uh, that I purchased online and then just fit into the pen. And, uh, so, you can see that larger one, and you can even get more line thickness. You can see it's thinner there and down to very thick strokes. And if you want to buy one of these, you can get them online. Um, there's one called a Confucius, which is huge, um, but some brands are Hero and Duke, and there will be some other ones. Um, you can buy those pens, or you can simply buy the nibs, which is what I did. Actually, I just bought, I just bought this pen today. Uh, with It had a standard fountain pen nib on it. I think it had a medium and then I had these that I had bought online, these Jinhao nibs, and was able to just pull it off and then, you know, stick the this new one on there. And the, but of course, be careful when you do that because you somewhat have to know what you're doing. It's kind of self-explanatory, but you'll void the warranty on a pen if you have a warranty, and so. You know, check out, search for another video from someone about how to swap nibs out and all of that. Anyway, so the uses of this, the reason you'd want a pen like this is not only like, oh, it's a neat trick, but also um, you can do some calligraphy with it. For example, um, let's use some calligraphy in English because I know it's made for the like Chinese writing, but yes, my, my Chinese writing is awful, even though I know a little bit of it, but, you know, so, 
Let's write the word great. So I'm trying to look at the camera at the same time that I'm writing. Make the R a little bolder. There you go. Great. Just like take the thin part of it and add some curly Q lines or something. Right, you can see that, and even with the uh, another quick example, I'll just write um, a three letter word like, I don't know, sky. up to add some thin, line, thin lines. Oops. And it's a little off-center, but whatever. You get the idea. Let's try that again. It's because my ego says so. With some practice, you can get some pretty cool stuff in there. And so it's not, not only for calligraphy, but regular writing. It's great for note-taking. For example, um, I use... Uh, I have a little daily planner, and I use um, this pen, actually, nearly every day. And this pen, with its food a nib, I can, you know, say I need to buy um, deodorant, so I can just write deodorant real quick, or I can write, um, I need to buy, um, cat food. I don't have a cat, but that came to mind. You anyway, know, um, and if you, you can make something important, like it's very important to buy another pen, so you can make it bolder. You can, it's easy to cross something out, like this. You can that's important. That's not so important. You can vary it. I mean, you can use like a multicolored pen like that for such a thing, but you know, that's that's not what we do here. So, so for a fountain pen, a food nib is great for practical use. It's great for uh, some calligraphy. It's even great for like fine art. Um, I like to do art. My name's, oh yeah. Also, you can, I just noticed this ink smears because when you lay down a thick line like that, it takes a long time for it to dry compared to a thin line. So, especially if you're left-handed like me, you have to really be careful that you don't run your hand over it and then you know, smear your work. So, like, alright, so I like to do artwork. I'm terrible at faces. So I don't do faces a lot, but allow me to show you some expression you, you can get in the faces. You can get some real personality um, compared to just a, a pen that only has one line thickness. So it's, you know, almost brush-like. Um, so here's my face, which always ends up looking like a middle-aged um, disgruntled man. Give me some... Anyway, so right when you draw faces, I'm not even like concerned so much about the line width. I'm just doing a quick sketch. But with a quick sketch, the automatic variation in the lines. For the most part, yeah, I, I made those thin on purpose, which you can do if you take more time and are more careful. But the, um, anyway, just the quickness of it, it, it makes it almost random and almost more natural looking, despite the, I'm trying to make them happier. You know, I always, they always look like middle-aged men for some reason. But um, one more thing you can do is allow me to draw so I can kind of see through the paper. Yeah. Allow me to draw 
um, some architecture with this. You can be real expressive here. For example, with thick lines, you can make things seem more close. And thin lines, things seem farther away. That's an artist trick. There. There we go. So this column can appear further away. And then we have a, this one, you'll look, we can look straight on at it. There we go. And you can say it. Some, like some vaulted ceiling in a cathedral or something. So... You can see... You can add some highlights here too. Make some... that but you know I'm just doing this quickly so not being too careful but right so you can do a lot with art so they're great for calligraphy they're great for regular note-taking they're great for sketching for art um, I've seen some good videos on just using these for uh, street scenes for sketching street scenes you know, also the other thing, you know, you can make something close up, lamp post, person, make it thin, someone further away in the background. So, my final thoughts on food a nibs is that I really recommend them. I really recommend you buy the nibs or you search online for some pens because they're they're useful, they're great, and honestly. This is my everyday carry pen. I carry this all the time. I have it clipped in my pocket, and I use it because it's it can do that. It can do it's so useful to to me to take notes, to write something down, um, to to do a quick sketch, you know, an art or whatever. So those are food a nibs. Check them out. They're really fun and very useful.